Hi everyone, I'm Cheyenne Malone. As dealerships tally their sales and analysts pour over the data, the numbers paint a picture of both current market dynamics and future trends. Today we are learning what Charlie Chesbro, Cox Automotive Senior Economist, is seeing in the sales data so far. Charlie, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me. So I take it you're maybe a little bit of a numbers guy, right? Yes, <laughs> maybe a little yes, bit. That's true. So we know that January is typically, you know, one of the lowest volume sales months in any given year, really. How did we see new sales um, vehicles perform in January this time around? Well, they, they did not surprise, at least in terms of the change from December. They certainly ticked downward. Uh, sales in the month were down about 26 percent from what we had done uh, in December. So they was coming in as expected, a much slower month. But on a year-over-year -year basis, sales were actually up a little bit, about 3%. That's a little misleading, though. We had an extra sales day in January this year. So really, the, the way to view the market is it was basically flat uh, when compared to last year. And that was a little bit disappointing. I you know, We can't say that the year started off with a bang. It was uh, more of a, a much milder market than what we were thinking we might get. Anything that you saw in the January sales data that could be more encouraging or perhaps worrying? Well, on the plus side, we saw that average transaction prices fell quite a bit. Uh, prices were down about three and a half percent. That's about seventeen hundred dollars uh, from where they were in January of 2023. So those lower prices will certainly help vehicle sales, will help uh, that affordability issue that's been uh, dragging on the market here for many potential vehicle buyers. But one of the concerns that we did see in the January numbers was that the seasonally adjusted selling rate or the SAR uh, fell to about a 15 million pace. And that was down from about a 16.1 million pace in December. Mm -hmm. So not only is the sales volume down when uh, you account for the seasonality effects that we expect January to be a lower, even when you account for that, the sales pace had fallen uh, down about a million units. So what we're looking for is, was that just an anomaly? We've had a very choppy market over the last year. Uh, so maybe it was just more chop or when we get the numbers at the end of this uh, end of next week for February, are we seeing that the market is in fact actually slowing down out there? So that's what we're keeping an eye on. Curious too, what role is inventory and price playing in the new retail market so far this year? Well, it's certainly been a major contributor on the plus mm -hmm. side. Uh, inventory levels are much higher this year than they were a year ago, about 50% higher. So 750,000 mm -hmm. more units out there around the country. So that's certainly, uh, giving a lot of potential vehicle buyers much more product selection, uh, certainly more than they had last year. So that's going to that's going to help sales. Uh, and the other big issue is that with the return of inventory, we're seeing the return of incentives, uh, and they've risen quite a bit over the last year. Uh, we had a uh, we we basically hit a low of the incentive uh, relative to the transaction price, a measure that we measure here at Cox Automotive, uh, of about two percent. Uh, when we had a really tight vehicle market back in 2022. But that's risen uh, as the inventory levels have come back, and we're now looking at incentives being about 6% of the transaction price. We're still below sort of the 2019 levels where tra uh, incentives were about 10% of the vehicle transaction price, but we're certainly uh, changing from the seller's market we had uh, a little over a year ago. It's getting much more uh, towards the buyer's favor these days mm -hmm. with rising incentives. And we have to bring up EVs, right? So last year we saw the milestone of over 1 million units being sold in 2023. How are EV, EV sales going so far this year in 2024? Are you expecting more of the same? Well, they certainly have, EV shares certainly have been trending higher over the last year. We finished uh, 2023 with about a 7.5% EV share of the market. Our expectation is that's going to continue to rise here through 2024. Uh, it's a little early to get the final numbers on EV sales for January. Not all the manufacturers uh, report detailed sales. But we do know that Tesla was up about 20% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, but Ford's EV sales were down about 10% on a year-over-year -year basis. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. But I think the outlook still looks quite favorable for EVs uh, over the next couple of years, even though there's a lot more concern about sort of what's the level of penetration we're going to be at uh, at the end of the decade. The, 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 the role of EVs over the, over the near term is going to continue to rise just because there's so many more products coming to market. Sure. 
As we closed out last year, Cox Automotive was forecasting slow growth in 2024, expecting 2024 volume to be around 15.7 million. Do you still see that being the case? That's still our view. We, we remain cautiously optimistic that the market's going to be just a little bit better this year. Uh, nothing to write home about. We're still dealing with major headwinds from high interest rates and high vehicle prices. Uh, but we still think that a growing economy uh, is going to help lift all boats and we'll see the market be a little bit stronger. And the idea that incentives are likely to continue to rise and interest rates, uh, the consensus thinking is now is that we're going to start to see interest rates fall through the course of this year uh, as the Fed maybe starts uh, changing their interest rate policy uh, later this year. So all of those factors are going to help lift the market just a little bit, but there's certainly a major headwind still that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If you could recommend one thing for dealers to focus on as we head into March to close out Q1 strong, what would it be, Charlie? Well, these prices are high and these interest rates are high, and I think this affordability issue is something that's a, a real price shock for a lot of folks when they start looking at vehicles out there. And I think one of the, the uh, important issues that the, man, uh, the dealers can stress to the potential vehicle buyers is the savings that potentially could be incurred from a new vehicle. Uh, certainly, if you can make a five mile per gallon uh, increase in your fuel economy on a new vehicle, that can save you know, up to $50 a month or more for many uh, vehicle uh, drivers out there. Uh, and in addition to repair costs, uh, you know, the new vehicle is going to insulate you from exposure to expensive repair costs if you're currently driving in an older vehicle. And of course, uh, the safety factor of these new vehicles, uh, you know, most are equipped with all, kind of, all kinds of driving assist features uh, on top of uh, just being, uh, you know, all, almost all vehicles being four or five star uh, crash rated at this point. Uh, that safety factor can mitigate a lot of the concerns about higher costs because, you uh, uh, it's certainly some of the best products that the industry has ever put out there. Any final thoughts for us, Charlie, as we wrap up? Just as I said, we remain cautiously optimistic that the market's going to continue to rise a little bit, but uh, I still think it's, uh, it's going to be slow going here to get back towards the more robust markets we had prior to COVID. Hang in there, all the patients, right? Thanks so yeah, much, Charlie. Sure. Charlie Chesbro, Senior Economist at Cox Automotive. Thanks so much for your insight today. And thank all of you for watching CBT Now exclusively on CBTNews.com and now streaming on Roku and Apple TV.